Good morning. This morning I would like to talk about the rich theological concept of the Theotokos in Orthodox Christianity. As you may know, the term Theotokos means God-bearer and is often translated Mother of God. We use it to honor the Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord. As you also may know, we're in the middle of the Dormition Fast. It's a period of reflection and prayer that centered on her falling asleep. So this morning I want to consider what the Old Testament tells us about her. You might find that surprising. You see, the early church fathers had a profound understanding of the spiritual depth of the Old Testament narratives, symbols, and laws. They believed that the events, characters, and rituals were not merely historical occurrences, but they were types that prefigured Christ's ultimate reality of salvation. Figures such as Adam and Moses are seen in connection with Jesus Christ. In the sacrificial system, they saw a shadow of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Or the exodus from Egypt as a foreshadowing of liberation from sin, ultimately provided by Christ. This typological approach allowed the early church fathers to explore the profound continuity between the Old and New Testaments, emphasizing the divine harmony in God's plan across history. So it's no surprise that the fathers saw the Theotokos in the Old Testament as well. Two striking applications of this, are uh, of types and shadows to the Theotokos, are the Ark of the Covenant and the Burning Bush, which provide a fascinating perspective on Mary's role in Orthodox theology and our salvation. Just as the ark carried the tablets of the Ten Commandments and the burning bush was a vessel of God's presence to Moses, the Theotokos bore God, making her a unique instrument of divine grace. In Orthodox belief, the Theotokos embodies the relationship between God and humanity. Through her willingness to become the mother of God, she is seen as a pivotal figure in the incarnation, the moment when God became man. This elevates her to an important place in the salvation story, emphasizing her role connecting divine and human. The parallels of the Ark of the Covenant, which held sacred relics, just as Mary held within her the womb, the savior of the world. She was the vessel that held fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, bringing both covenants together in her person. St. Athanasius in the fourth century proclaimed this, O Ark of the New Covenant, clothed with purity instead of gold, you are the Ark which has found the golden vessel containing the true manna, that is, the flesh in which divinity resides. You surpass them, for it is written in Isaiah, the earth is my footstool, but you carry within you the feet of the head, and the entire body of the perfect God. Comparing the Theotokos to the burning bush is just as compelling. The scripture says the bush was filled with God's presence and it burned with fire, but it was not consumed by flames. This is the same with our Theotokos. She bore God's son without losing her virginity and she held God's presence within her for nine months. This profound mystery speaks to her purity her sanctity, her unique status as a vessel for God in a way beyond our human comprehension. Our Theotokos has also been called the new Eve. We know from scripture that Jesus was called the new Adam, but the early fathers also saw Mary as the new Eve. Her yes to God, her obedience to God's plan, in contrast to Eve's disobedience to God, our archetypal mother of all living. Eve's disobedience led to humanity's fall into sin and death, and Mary's obedience led to the fulfillment of our redemption through the birth of Jesus. She demonstrates the transformative power of submission to God's will, and it underscores her role as the new Eve, the key to restoration of humanity's relationship with God. The Theotokos is not just a historical figure, but a living presence in the life of believers today a model of faith, of humility, and of the kind of love that gives of itself. She embodies the deepest mysteries of faith, the incarnation, our redemption, and the intricate connection between God and man. In our Orthodox liturgical tradition, 
She is revered in our hymns and prayers, and she is celebrated in several of our 12 major feasts of the year, including this one that's coming up, Dormition. So how could it be that our Theotokos was carried into heaven after her falling asleep? Well, because Christ brought this ark of the new covenant to dwell in the Holy of Holies in the temple of the heavenly Jerusalem. At the end of her earthly days, Mary was taken up body and soul so she would not face corruption into heaven. As St. John of Damascus put it, so it was fitting that the mother should take up her abode in the royal city of her son. That royal city of her son is the heavenly Jerusalem where she is now. Thank God, blessed fast.